For our last presentation on the technology, we're going to hear from Hannah Kaufman. She's a third year law student at Chicago Kent, and she's been working at uh, programs there where they've been developing uh, materials for our programs and our other partners in access to justice. And there's actually a course curriculum that has been uh, piloted by them and is spreading that she's going to talk to you about where more and more law students will be building interactive interviews, interactive documents, and resources for self-represented self litigants that will be available to the courts and to the legal aid program. So, Hannah, can you tell us more about the project? Good afternoon. My name is Hannah Kaufman and today I feel hopeful. I feel hopeful despite the persistent reports that the skills and competencies critical to lawyering are not being taught in traditional law school courses. I feel hopeful that even though for every five poor people with a civil legal problem, only one of those five people will be able to face that problem with the help of a lawyer. I feel hopeful because these twin problems, teaching law students skills for a world that no longer exists, and failing to provide legal support to a full 80% of America's most vulnerable populations, can be addressed together through innovative law school courses like the one I'm about to describe to you today. In 2013, I enrolled in a class taught by Professor Ron Stout, who's in the audience today. The class was part of the A to J Clinical Course Project, which is an initiative, as Glenn said, funded by a Legal Services Corporation Technology Initiative grant. So the course um, combines students, uh, matches them with legal aid organizations, and through a, a series of different activities, the students use technology to help maximize the capacity of such organizations to serve their clients. In the process, they learn the lawyer and skills of the future. The cornerstone of the A to J Clinical Course Project, and I'm glad this slide was up for a while first so you could really see it, um, is the use of something called A to J software, um, which allows the users to generate user-friendly interviews, guided interviews, that help people fill out forms by asking them a series of interactive questions. The user experience was designed specifically for poor people who are unrepresented, and the authoring tools um, creating the interviews were meant for people who, like me, had absolutely no prior computer programming experience. A person who wants to fill out a form to file in court can click through the interview, answering questions one at a time, and then at the end, the court document automatically assembles with everything in the right place. For my project, I made the excellent choice to partner with the State of California's Center for Family, Children, and the Courts, and its managing attorney, Bonnie Huff, who is also here today, to automate the process of requesting a change in child support payments. California, as you heard earlier from the Chief Justice, uses an innovative model where a, a veteran family lawyer called the Family Law Facilitator is appointed to each county to offer free legal advice to anyone who needs it. Of course, with the majority of family law litigants being self-represented and only one family law facilitator per county, the demand for services far exceeds the ability of the facilitators to meet those needs. The facilitators use their own forms to gather the information they need before filing in court. And for my project, I chose to work on creating an interview for one such form. Actually, this is just the top of the first of three pages uh, that you can take to a California facilitator to start requesting a change in child support payments in court. Ultimately, though, people have to find the facilitators, they have to fill in um, what amounts to 33 pages of documents and bring in documentation of whatever it is they're claiming has happened in their lives to justify the changes they're requesting. Every step of the way poses difficult questions, as you can see from here. Um, what appears to be even a simple three-page form um, poses a set of questions that maps out to what you just saw. Um, of course, this is what the user sees on the user's end. Um, it's clean, simple, step-by-step -step guide, and if the user doesn't understand a question, she can just click learn more and help appears. I also realized that because this wasn't a form that would be filed directly with the court, but instead with the facilitators, people might need a little bit extra assistance in figuring out what to do next. So I created a cover sheet that would automatically be added to the final file that was customized with the person's information based on answers they gave. This sheet tells the user where to go to find their family law facilitator, what to bring with them, and tells them what it is they've just created. 
The feedback, as you can see from the facilitators, was very positive, but I want to stress just how expansive the impact of this course has been for me personally. I was so inspired by the course that I immediately sought out a second project after it was over. I recruited three other students from my school in creating needed A to J guided interviews so that people without lawyers could both initiate and respond to paternity actions in the state of Kansas. Working with the Center of the Chicago Pence Center for Access to Justice and Technology and Marilyn Hart from Kansas Legal Services, I helped these three students who had not been in the original course with me and had never been exposed to these tools before to learn the technology and together we created three new guided interviews. Other students who have had the opportunity to take the course have been similarly inspired to continue this work. About a third of students who have taken the class go on uh, to graduate with a certificate in public interest law and a full quarter of Illinois Legal Aid Online's current staff is comprised of people who have taken some version of the class. But the impact of the A to J clinical course project extends far beyond Illinois Legal Aid Online and even beyond the state of Illinois as a whole. In its first year, the course was taught in just one school, Chicago Penn, to just seven students. These students partnered with one legal aid organization in one state. But by the end of last year, seven schools had offered the course to more than 100 students. The students have created more than 50 A to J guided interviews like the one I just described to you, and they've partnered with organizations in 17 states. By the end of next year, the number of schools who have offered the course will have doubled. I am certain that very soon this whole map will be green. If you want to be a part of what's happening here, please reach out to me so that we can continue this conversation together. Thank you. compelling first half. <laughs> to uh, quote Hannah, it makes me feel hopeful. <laughs> and I hope it does you too. Well, we don't have a halftime show. There's no marching band. But we do have a 15-minute break 